I call the Honourable Annette King. Mr Speaker, we heard today that the National Party are part of a seven-year-old government. Well, I say to Heke Parata and the members opposite, well, the country's getting the seven-year itch. And you know what happens when the seven-year itch comes? Along with it comes divorce. And, Mr Speaker, I have been here for some time, as you know. And I know when a government is reaching the end of their time. When time's up, when the public start to say, time to move on. And that'll be particularly for you, Mr Bishop, it'll be time for you to move on. And that time, Mr Speaker, is when there is chaos in the House. When there are points of order after points of order, when there is anger, when there is recriminations and when there are accusations, when the answers from ministers are nothing more than sledging, when the Prime Minister loses the respect in the office, when he loses the respect in the office, when the Prime Minister acts like a clown, when everything is a joke, when the most important issue of the day is what tie he's going to wear in the Parliament and what tie the Prime Minister of Australia is going to wear in the Parliament. When, when, the, when this House is reduced to that level, you know that this is a government that is on the way out. And those who say the Prime Minister's position affords him respect. I say to them, they are wrong. You earn respect in that position. That's what happens in that position. You earn respect, and this Prime Minister has lost it. He has lost respect. He has lost dignity. He has lost decency. He's lost compassion. And he has lost interest in human rights, as we have heard here over the last two days. And if he ever had any interest in human rights, because he still is the only person I have ever met in my life who didn't know what side he was on the Springboks tour, whether he was for apartheid South Africa or not, but I noticed he was pretty quick to get over to the funeral of Nelson Mandela. I have a sense of deja vu, Mr Speaker, and I think the Right Honourable Winston Peters will have it too. Because there was a party that took a breach of privilege against a member Winston Peters, who should never have had a breach of privilege about him. They spent a year crucifying him, only to find that the public found them despicable. And that's what I find despicable from the chief whip of the National Party, who is such a big boo baby that he can't take a little bit of sledging that happens in politics. I have heard much worse things said in this House, I can tell you. Much worse. In fact, I think Trevor Mallard said worse things than that in this House and hasn't appeared before a Privileges Committee. So I want to start my contribution to this debate today by saying that the National Party hate the provinces. They hate the provinces, Mr Speaker, because I remember last Wednesday's debate. There they were, one after the other, sneering and scoffing and ridiculing because the Labour Party was going to Palmerston North for our conference. They thought it was a laugh. They thought it was hopeless. They didn't see that we had the foresight to go to the mighty Manawatu to the city of Palmerston North, one of the great provincial cities of New Zealand that's been wise enough to return a Labour member decade after decade. And Mr Speaker, I want you to compare that. I want you to compare our conference in Palmerston North to the National Party conference in the Sky City Casino. The Sky City Casino. There they were, holed up with dozens of security guards, scared to death because there was a few protesters outside wearing high-vis vests. So they were surrounded by the usual blue rinse and pearls and they were surrounded by a whole bunch of arrogant cabinet ministers who were, who were there telling them what they ought to do. And they made an awful lot of effort to keep the old unwashed out of that conference, didn't they? Goodness me, they might have made a mess if they'd got in and told them the truth. Well, I think the National Party has become one big yaya club. 
One big yaya club. If you don't know what a yaya club is, it's one of these new elite clubs for the super rich, privileged kids of Auckland. And I can tell you that the yaya club, Mr. Speaker, is now the National Party. That is what we're seeing. I thank the member for her insight, but her time has expired.